This week was starting to look a little bit like a carbon copy of last week. Yesterday, Saturday the 9th, the fern effect was in operation again. It was really strong, really gusty winds, lots of trees down in the valley. It was really warm as well, about 10 degrees. But finally today, Sunday, the rain has made it over the mountain. Indeed, up here in Lavenshire now, it's finally turning back to snow as well. So, happy days. So it wasn't just a few old dead trees which have been felled in the fern winds yesterday. These are fully grown, mature, healthy trees which have fallen down left, right and centre. Just around the rim of Latgoyan here, I can count four that have gone down, but they're absolutely everywhere. On the highway coming into town, there's a couple. There's one right on the edge of the town centre. And obviously, you go into the woods further, there's just, it's just chaos. It's like, like a bomb's gone off. It's just absolutely crazy. I've never seen anything like this while I've been in Chamonix. Like, yeah, there's been a number of big summer thunderstorms while I've been here, which have brought branches down and the occasional tree down. But this was just the firm winds, and it's just, yeah, brought the trees down everywhere. But not only that, damaged buildings, brought down signs as well. Thankfully, as far as I'm aware, no one's actually been caught out, caught out by this and been injured by it, but it's certainly been damaged to property, a few buildings have been damaged, definitely a few cars which have been flattened, so yeah, pretty crazy. I was green with envy for everyone who didn't have to have work on Monday and Tuesday this week, because despite of all that crazy weather we had in the bottom of the valley, actually, up high, decent, there was decent amounts of snow and very little wind. So, conditions on the Valley Bonds, for example, were absolutely fantastic. The kind of conditions that you only get a handful of times a year. So, here's Leo Summit making the most of those conditions. Lovely, soft, blowy powder. You don't see someone backflipping at 3,500 metres very often. So, once again, not a huge amount of snow made it over the Mont Blanc Massif itself. But the Valley Bonds certainly caught plenty of snow. Probably at least 50 centimetres of snow up high over there. Reasonable snow on Grand Monte as well. There's been less so on Brabham Pajere side. But yeah, definitely Cormier got more than its fair share again. And much further into the Oste Valley, they got absolutely dumped on again. Again, easily 50, 60 centimetres plus at relatively low levels. So, armed with that information, I went on another Austin adventure this week on Wednesday, headed to a tiny little resort called Crebacol this time. The theory being that a small resort, absolutely no one skis there, therefore there's going to be tons of untouched powder even three days after the snowfall which was true, nobody had skied there, there was tons of untouched powder, but unfortunately it was absolutely sunbaked, so skiing wasn't actually that good, but still, it was a lovely little adventure, and they'd had absolutely loads there. I imagine Pila would have been really good this weekend, so maybe I should have gone there, but hey, it's always nice to go on a little bit of an adventure and see someone new, and I'll suss the area out for next time there's a big dump of snow now as well. So, once again, the Col de Passon was in pretty good condition earlier this week, lovely soft blurry snow on the descent, Pretty good, pretty stable snow on the climb up as well. But this time of year, you do just need to be aware that it is very avalanche prone on the approach. So you need to get up there pretty early. So if you are stuck behind a long queue or you're not very quick and efficient, then consider turning back because you don't want to get caught out there when it, if it does slide in the heat. So yeah, that's still gonna, the, the ski itself is still going to be good for a while, but yeah, just make sure you're up there quickly if you do go for it. Or simply just skiing off over the back side of Gomente, there was some lovely snow to be found there as well. And even on the front side, you can still find some pretty good untouched powder at the top of Grand Monte now, if you skin all the way up to the top of the old lift station and just ski back down to the resort, there's still some pretty nice snow there to be had too. And that's what I've come to ski today. So, as you can probably tell, I'm up at the top of the mountain. That's the Drew right behind me, got Mont Blanc over there. So this is near the top of the old lift station, the Grand Monte. It's just about 50 metres up there that way. So I've skied, I've skinned up the front face. I'm going to ski back down the front face probably as well afterwards. My plan today was to bring you the snow report from the Valley Blanche. Just skin up there somewhere to a nice quiet spot and give you the report from there. But I was thwarted because despite the fact that I managed to find a perfect parking space, the Guy de Midi lift was full all day, fully booked. We weren't letting anyone else up. So. I gave up on that, resorted to plan B, I've come to Grand Monte and skinned up here instead. But as far as plan B's go, it's not a bad, not a bad plan B. It seems in Chamonix you can't win. Finally all the schools have gone back and all the school kids have gone home and yet now we're just right round of tourists instead. So yeah, the slopes are slightly quieter but the town itself is just as busy and on a day like today, thousands of tourists are trying to go up the Guy de Midi. So unfortunately, if you're a skier, you're kind of stuck. So, the coldish weather that we have been having for the last couple of weeks, 
winter 2.0 if you will has largely departed now it's absolutely glorious but the, the heat is definitely back we're on the south side i.e the warm side of the jet stream once again and whilst it's not crazy warm it's definitely average if not above average temperatures and we're going to have a broadly speaking westerly airflow for a, a while now which is going to is largely which is going to be a, a mix of sunshine and showers basically for the coming week so not every day will look at glorious like this it'll be a bit damp and gloomy for some days but there's no major weather coming through just a few weak, a few weak weather fronts will glance glance through the alps so might get a little bit of fresh snow on a couple of days this week it'll be raining down in the valley but there's certainly no big to snowfall totals on its way and equally it won't be a complete washout if you're in the valley either more showery or light rain so whilst there is still some nice lovely soft powder to be had right now in another couple of days it'll basically all be gone it'll be sun baked and we'll be back to spring skiing conditions already again already down in the on the lower piece it's definitely spring skiing conditions at the tour brevent Fougere, it's definitely going to be getting icy in the morning slushy in the afternoon here at Grand Monte, it'll hot up a little bit better, but it's always quite icy here anyway. But yeah, if you're coming out in the next week or so, expect to find some quite nice spring skiing conditions again. So, pack your shorts. For what it's worth, that's the old top station at Grand Monte just up there. It's been sat idle for basically four years now, maybe longer since the fire at the mid-station. But they finally started working it again now, so in a few years time, there'll be another lift back up here again. But for now, this is the round with the ski tourers. So if you want to enjoy all this lovely untouched snow up here, you got to work for it. But it's definitely worth the effort. And to be honest, I think a lot of us enjoy this more that now that the lift's gone because it's much quieter. And there's Chamonix looking rather green and brown all the way down there. Just about make out the piece for La Zouche in the distance. Conditions at La Zouche, apart from at the very top now, are very, very poor. So unless you're actually staying in La Zouche, it's really not worth heading there if you are coming here. Much better off going to Latour or Grand Monte. Here you have the Guise Chardonnay, one of my favourite mountains in the whole world. Just act absolutely stunning from every angle. Up there, the colder Chardonnay, a popular ski tour. Might be able to make out the skin track heading up there and some of the tracks heading down. It's also the first call of the Trois-Coles itinerary, but that's becoming increasingly difficult in recent years. Up here, the Guide Argentia. Again, a popular easy alpine peak and a ski tour. You can ski up the Mino Glacier in the middle. To the right of that again, you've got the Col d'Argentia. Again, another popular ski tour. And further right, Col de Zamethys, I believe. Again, another popular ski tour. Might be able to make out the tracks coming down there. And further around to the corner, you'd have the Mont Dolon, which is the triple point between France, Italy and Switzerland. Although, it's just out of shot right now. And that makes up one side of the Argentia Basin.